Good evening. I'm John Miller, Deputy Commissioner for Intelligence and Counterterrorism. We're here to provide an update on the ongoing investigation into the shooting that occurred earlier today in Brooklyn. We're going to hear from Police Commissioner of the City of New York, Keyshawn Sewell, uh, Chief of Department Ken Corey, we have First Deputy Commissioner Ed Caban here, Chief of Detectives James Essig will update us on the investigation. Uh, we also have Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI, in charge of the New York office, Mike Driscoll, um, and the JTTF efforts uh, with the NYPD that are ongoing, as well as the Special Agent in Charge of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, uh, John DeVito. But we'll begin with word from Gracie Mansion from the Mayor of the City of New York, Eric Adams. In front of the podium right there is the commissioner of the NYPD, Keychan Sewell. We also know that the chief of the department, Ken Corny, is there as well. Ken Corey, excuse me. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for attending this evening and helping us get this information out to the public. It's so important. We are truly fortunate that this was not significantly worse than it is. As we reported this afternoon, a man who was traveling on a Manhattan-bound N train opened two canisters that dispensed smoke throughout the subway car. He then shot multiple passengers as the train pulled into the 36th Street Station in Sunset Park. Ten people were injured by gunfire, and an additional 13 were either uh, injured as the, they rushed to get out of the train station or they suffered smoke inhalation. Some good news is that none of the injuries appear to be life-threatening. As detectives processed the crime scene, they recovered a 9-millimeter semi-automatic handgun, extended magazines, and a hatchet. Also found is a liquid we believe to be gasoline, and a bag containing consumer-grade fireworks and a hobby fuse. About an hour ago, detectives located a U-Haul van in Brooklyn that we believe is connected to the suspect. At this time, we still do not know the suspect's motivation. Clearly, this individual boarded the train and was intent on violence. We are conducting a highly coordinated investigation that includes NYPD detectives, the FBI-NYPD Joint Terrorism Task Force, and the ATF, who have been instrumental in tracing the firearm and ballistics. The suspect is a dark-skinned male and was wearing a neon orange vest and a gray-colored sweatshirt. We do have a person of interest in this investigation, but we need the public assistance with additional information. We're asking anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers at 800-577-TIPS. We know this incident is of grave concern to New Yorkers. We cannot lose sight of victims in this city. We will use every resource we can to bring those to justice who continue to prey on the citizens of New York. I'll ask Chief James Essex to come in and give details of the investigation. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Today, at 8.24 a.m., aboard a Manhattan-bound end train, 10 people were shot, seven males, three females, 
and they were remo removed to area hospitals. An additional 13 people suffered injuries related to smoke inhalation, falling down, or a panic attack. The information I'm about to give you is preliminary and it's subject to change right now. As that N train was between stations 59th Street and the 36th Street stations, seated in the second car in the rear corner was a dark-skinned male. Various descriptions of his height are given. He is heavy set, wearing an orange-green nylon-type construction vest. He also had on a gray hoodie, a surgical mask, and a neon green construction helmet. As the train approached the 36th Street station, witnesses state the male opened up two smoke grenades, tossed them on the subway floor, brandishes a Glock 9mm handgun. He then fired that weapon at least 33 times, striking 10 people. The male then fled the scene, and detectives are actively trying to determine his whereabouts. Recovered at that scene was a Glock 17 9 mm handgun, three extended Glock-type magazines. One was still in the weapon, one under a seat, and one in a backpack. We had 33 discharged shell casings, 15 bullets, five bullet fragments, two detonated smoke grenades, two non-detonated smoke grenades, a hatchet, a black garbage can, a black milk type style rolling cart, the gasoline, and a U-Haul key. The U-Haul key at the scene led us to the recovery of a U-Haul van a short while ago in Brooklyn. The male, who we believe is the renter of this U-Haul in Philadelphia, is a Frank R. James, male 62 years old, with addresses in Wisconsin and Philadelphia. We are endeavoring to locate him to determine his connection to the subway shooting, if any. The two crime scenes, the subway and the van, are very active and are still being processed. We are asking for anyone's help with information, cell phone video, witness information, or any, if they can identify the perpetrator or the renter of this vehicle, to call Crime Stop is at 1-800-577-TIPS. There is a $50,000 reward out right now, $25,000 from the New York City Police Foundation, $12,500 from the MTA, and 12,500 from the TWA Local 100. I just want to assure everyone that we in the NYPD have all our resources working this, along with our partners in the FBI and the ATF, to find this perpetrator. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Mike Driscoll. We're going to oh, we're gonna oh, the go mayor? back to okay. the mayor, uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, we're ready for you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner and, and Chief. As we indicated, uh, today was a difficult day for New York. And days like these are playing out too often in cities across America. As mentioned this morning, we witnessed an act of violence and evil in the heart of Brooklyn where shooter attacked a subway car full of innocent people at the 36th Street station. We saw a quiet Tuesday morning turn the in train into a war zone as a smoke bomb was detonated and multiple shots rang out. We witnessed 20 individuals have been injured so far, as it was mentioned. And thanks to the quick thinking of the MTA crew and the bravery and cooperation of passengers, lives were saved. And thanks to our first responders, the injured were quickly taken to area hospitals, and all of them are expected to recover. You know I have been realistic and outspoken about my commitment to protecting public safety. I stand by that and will continue to do everything in my power to dam the rivers that feed the sea of violence. But this is not only a New York City problem. This rage, this violence, these guns, 
these relentless shooters are an American problem. And it's going to take all levels of government to solve it. It is going to take the entire nation to speak out and push back against the cult of death that has taken hold in this nation. A cult that allows innocents to be sacrificed on a daily basis. A country with buying weapons of mass destruction is as easy as picking up a piece of plywood or a garden shovel. A country where there are more guns than people. There are over 400 million guns in this country alone. The U.S. gun homicide rate is 26 times that of other high-income countries, where over 100 people die in gun violence every day. Guns are the leading cause of death for American children and teens, like the 16-year-old baby we lost in the Bronx. From schools in Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Virginia, to music festivals in Las Vegas, to nightclubs in Orlando, to movie theaters and yoga classes across the nation. These killers have used weapons of mass destruction to massacre innocent people. They control no armies or military forces, yet these individual killers terrorize our nation. I have often said that this city is not going to adapt to dysfunction. Ending gun violence means changing gun laws. We cannot clean up a flood when the water is still pouring into the basement. And we can never stop the killing if we cannot stop the guns. To be clear, we will not surrender our city to the violent few, and we will not surrender all of America to this cult of death. The sea of violence comes from many rivers. We must dam every river that feeds the greater crisis. That is the work of my life, this administration, and this police department. I will not stop until the peace we deserve becomes the reality we experience. You have my word as a former police officer, a fellow New Yorker, and your mayor, that we will end this epidemic and that will capture the individual responsible for today's attack. We will capture him and prosecute him to the full extent of the law. Thank you, NYPD, FDNY, our first responders, and the collaboration from the federal government, the state, the city agencies. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to turn it over to Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the FBI in New York office, Michael Driscoll. Thank you, Commissioner. I want to start by expressing our hopes and prayers that the victims of this event will enjoy a quick recovery. They are our primary focus right now. I also want to echo the thanks for the partnership to the NYPD, the ATF, and all the partners who are contributing to this investigation. Right now, the FBI and NYPD Joint Terrorism Task Force is fully engaged with this investigation, providing assistance through manpower, technical assistance, and basically everything we can throw at it. We expect the process to be a long one as we gather all possible information to track down all possible leads. And I would encourage you, as it was mentioned earlier, to please reach out to the NYPD tip line at 1-800-577-TIPS. And I would also add, as frequently the case in many of our current investigations, uh, everyone's got a cell phone in their pocket. There's a lot of video out there. If you have digital information that you'd like to share with, with us in connection with this investigation, please visit fbi.gov slash Brooklyn shooting where you can upload that information. So we are seeking the public's help. You heard mention before of a name of possible interest. Videos would be particularly helpful or any other additional witnesses who have yet to come forward that can provide information uh, that might help this investigation. So thank you for your participation, and I thank everyone for their partnership in the course of the investigation. Thank you. We'll take a couple of questions. Your yeah, Commissioner Sewell, is it the belief that he fled on foot after abandoning the van, or not? We are not sure where he went at this point. That is subject to investigation. We have a number of resources that are combing on foot and doing video canvases as well to determine where he went. Post? I'm sorry. No post? Uh, Commissioner, you posted videos online talking about being addicted, addicted to the mayor's mental health program. So based on some preliminary information, there were some postings possibly connected to our person of interest where he mentions homelessness, he mentions New York, and he does mention Mayor Adams. And as a result of that, in an abundance of caution, we're going to tighten the mayor's security detail. 
So just to be clear, so this person, Frank James, he's not the person of interest that is in custody at this moment? No. We have no one in custody well, at no this time. No, we are looking for Frank James. We know he rented this U-Haul van. The key of that U-Haul van was found at the crime scene in the subway. And Mr. James made those social media posts? We're pouring through that, but yes, correct. And you believe he was the one in the train? Is that correct? We're, we are looking to determine if he has any connection to the train. We know Mr. James rented that U-Haul truck in Philadelphia. So we're not calling them threats. He made some concerning posts, or someone made some concerning posts. We cannot attribute it to that individual yet. That's under investigation. But again, in an abundance of caution, we're going to tighten the mayor's security detail. That's all. Rocco, do you have any news? Does he have a question? Does he have any connection at all to transit system? He's a TA worker and any connection whatsoever to that subway station? That is subject to investigation. We don't have any information yet. Does he have a criminal record? Does he have a criminal record? What is his exact connection to the office? Mr. James is just a person of interest we know right now who rented that U-Haul van in Philadelphia. The keys to that U-Haul van were found in the subway in our shooter's possessions. We don't know right now if Mr. James has any connection to the subway. That's still under investigation. Uh, Chief Essek, do you have any what would be called robust DNA evidence from the crime scene or the van? The crime scene's still being processed now. The van is being processed, and the subway crime scene is being processed. But we, it's too early right now to tell. City, Katie? Um, can you explain where this wall was located? Was it nearby? And, and also, um, when you said um, you're investigating these videos, but can you confirm that it was him in the video or people that you know? And we're just trying to make that connection. The, the video, the YouTube videos and the videos on t there, There's a man who posted there, Frank James. We're still working to see if that's our person who rented the video. And where was the U-Haul located? Uh, Kings Highway in Brooklyn. Kings Highway in what intersection? 30 West 4th and Kings Highway. Is there anything more you can tell us about the content of the posts? And I know you said it wasn't a direct threat against Mr. Mayor, but is there anything said about the mayor that caused you to detail? There were general uh, topics of concern, and I don't want to go into too many details about the mayor's security detail. We're just doing it uh, just to be on the safe side. Complaints about homelessness, complaints about New York, nothing in general. I'm sorry, just general comments that cause us some concern that are subject to investigation at this point. Why were there no working surveillance cameras in the station? Why did police radios not work in the station? And how much did those factors hamper this investigation? Yeah, we know that there were three stations that the video wasn't working. We're still investigating that to see why or how those, uh, whether it was a mechanical problem, electrical issue, why those videos weren't up. And the police radios? The po there was no issues with police radios. There were reports that uh, one of the first officers on the scene said the radio was working. He told one of the teenagers there to call 911. Yeah, so patrol officers, so officers who work Top side, if you okay, will. We've been listening to the NYPD news conference the about the Switch. subway shooter, who, of course, launched smoke grenades as well. We've learned a lot of new information. We learned that they have named Frank James as a person of interest in today's subway attack. We have his image. We put, want to put it on the screen there. Police say he rented a U-Haul in Philadelphia that authorities believe is connected to this shooting. They found a U-Haul key inside the subway car, and that's how they've been able to connect it. Right now, they are still looking for him. The manhunt is still on. We've also seen an image of this U-Haul truck as well. Police have a lot of clues on this right now. They pretty much have everything they want except the suspect. With that, I want to bring in NBC's Ron Allen. He's live on the scene tonight from Brooklyn. He's been covering this all day for us. So, Ron, what are some of the things that stood out for you? It seems like police released a lot of new information just now. Well, earlier today, we know, we learned that the suspect left a lot of things on the train, including the handgun that he fired, uh, a, a backpack where he was carrying a lot of other materials that, that we now know that there was a U-Haul key there as well. So that 
apparently was the big break in the case, uh, just tracking from uh, things that they suspect left at the crime scene. So, so there's that. Uh, it was also striking that apparently he fired some 33 rounds. Uh, a lot of us were kind of feeling, uh, well, there were 20 people who were wounded, but you would think that if someone opened fire in a crowded subway car that there would have been more casualties and, God forbid, fatalities. That didn't happen. So it's striking that there were so many shots that were fired. Um, the uh, investigators are very careful to say that they only uh, are trying to connect this guy, James, now to this van, not to the not to the attack on the subway. But it seems clear that um, A plus B leads to C and so on and so forth. And they've moved through this very quickly and very methodically uh, through the day. And they now have a photo of him, which was something that we had been asking about all day, because there's obviously so much, so many security cameras around, so much surveillance that you would think that they would be able to do that. But it appears that they perhaps have a driver's license or something like that, uh, because they now have a uh, what they think is a fairly positive identity of the individual connected to this U-Haul van. That van is not far from here. Um, when it got there, how it got there, whether the suspect left the train station and went there, uh, who, it's unclear. Uh, all of that is still a mystery. And of course, the biggest mystery is where this individual is at this hour tonight. Um, All right, Ron Allen, with the latest reporting from the scene tonight, Ron, we appreciate that for insight and analysis on the investigation. I want to bring in Terrence Monahan. He served as the NYPD chief of the department from 2018 to 2021. I think if you look at our social media, you'll see two photos of the person of interest. Posted. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.